Hi you guys! Happy Wednesday! Um, so we're going to continue again our Buddhism lessons. So we're going to begin with this book again on kindness um, and read another short story. So this time we're going to read... Um, <clears throat> the Monk's Heavy Load. But first is the quote. Um, the quote is, delight in mindfulness, notice your thoughts. That's a good one. Um, I think this one's really short. Wow, it's very, very short. Okay, the monk's heavy load. One fine warm spring day, two monks, one young and one old, were traveling to a village far from their monastery to do some trading. In the high mountains where they lived, there were only small trails between villages, no roads and few bridges. This spring had been especially warm. Winter's dense snow was melting quickly, and many streams had become too swollen and dangerous to cross. After walking a distance on a rugged, steep trail, the two monks came upon a fast-moving stream where a small young woman stood timidly on the bank, afraid to cross. There's a moth. Um, the young monk reminded himself that as part of his religious training, he had vowed never to touch anyone of the, of the opposite sex. He nodded to the young woman as he passed her by, lifted his monk's robe up slightly, and carefully began to negotiate the stream. But to his amazement, the elder monk sped right past him while carrying the young woman in his arms. When the old monk put her down on the far shore, she bowed respectfully to him in thanks. Not saying a word in reply, he gave her a bright, broad smile and went on his way with a quick step. I'll show you the picture at the end. The young monk saw that the elder had continued on without him. With some effort, he finally managed to catch up. But as they walked on, he considered and considered and reconsidered the old man's action back at the stream. With each passing mile, his thoughts grew angrier and angrier until hours later, he stopped in his tracks, flushed with rage. He shouted and sputtered at the old monk, You broke your sacred vows! You were never to touch a, a woman! How can you forgive yourself? You should not be allowed back at our monastery. Surprised at this outburst, the old man turned to face him. I dropped that woman hours ago, he said. Have you been carrying her all this time? Interesting. So here's the picture of the older monk carrying the woman across the stream. So when the older monk says, he, he asks, he says, have you been carrying her all this time? He means it metaphorically, right? Not literally. Meaning that obviously the other monk didn't touch the woman at all. He didn't offer to carry her or help her in any way. Um, but he was thinking about this this older monk helping her, he was thinking about that, that woman this whole time that they were walking, um, which is metaphorically carrying her in his mind, right? So even though the, the older monk actually literally helped her cross, um, the other monk is carrying her for a lot longer in his mind, right? Um, so, very good story. Um, we're going to finish up here on our... Um, our holidays, so we just read about Buddha Day, mm -hmm. so now we're on Posan Day, and I hope I'm saying that correctly. So here we have Posan Day, um, and it takes place in June, and Posan celebrates the time when Buddhism came to Sri Lanka. Buddhists from Sri Lanka go to their temple, they listen to a talk, then they chant and meditate together. People make offerings and give money to the temple. It is a time to be especially generous. So here in this picture, it says, These pilgrims have come to... Oh gosh, I don't know if I'm going to say this right. Have come to Mihintale? Mihintale? I don't know. In Sri Lanka to worship on Pasan Day. In Sri Lanka, some people go on a pilgrimage to a place called Mihintale. This is where Buddhism first arrived in the country over 2,000 years ago. An Indian prince told the king of Sri Lanka all about it. Interesting. 
Um, so in this picture on the top right, it says, the Buddhist flag is raised outside a Buddhist temple in Britain for Poisson Day. So they raise flag. So maybe we'll draw a flag. Carolina's Diary, Monday, June 24th. Yesterday was Poisson Day. My mom's friend Sarah told me how it was celebrated at a London temple. Lots of Sri Lankan people go there. At, at 9 a.m., they raise the Buddhist flag outside the temple. It was a very happy moment. After puja, chanting and meditation, they listened to a talk. Afterward, they drank lots of tea and shared tasty Sri Lankan food. All right. So, unfortunately, I do not have all these colors, um, but I will make the same type of cross-hatching style for this picture. Okay? Or for this, this symbol. So, we have Poisson Day. So... Poisson Day. You guys can see that, right? Okay, cool. Alright, and then... Where's the purple marker? Everything's disappearing. Okay. Um, so they... Mm, I'll draw it upside down. So, because they have, like, this thing. You know how I brought those, those flags to the school that we hung from the ceiling? And they're... They're all draped down, um, like these flags in this picture, um, here, right, and here. So I'm just going to draw one that looks kind of like that. So it's a rectangle going down, like any normal flag. Um, and it has one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it has six stripes. So let me see. Um, oh, is that right? I think I did it right. And then it has four, one, two, three, four, five here. So one, two, three, four, five. Does that work? There. Okay. And they're all different colors, so maybe I'll try and shade that somehow. Okay, they all look very different. Um, and oh, the moth is in my face now. Lovely. Okay, and then all these are different colors too. Okay, nah, good enough. All right, Poisson Day. Uh, now we are on Dharma Day, and this takes place in June. Okay, did I say June? Oh my gosh, I meant July. It literally says July. Okay. I think I need my glasses next time. Okay, Dharma Day in July. Dharma Day celebrates the first time the Buddha gave his teachings called Dharma, which means truth. Buddhists believe that having things doesn't make people truly happy. They practice meditation. It helps them to understand that real happiness comes from learning to be happy with whatever we have or whatever we are doing. So in this picture it says, this monk is reading a story from the Pali Canon, um, which was written on strips of palm leaf. So I think that's what this is here. Um, so, and remember the canons, um, uh, the Pali, Pali Canons, um, those are the religious, um, the sacred text, the sacred scripture that Buddhists um, read. Um, and it's similar, I think, to the Bible for Christians, and the Torah, and the Tanakh um, for Jews, and um, in Hinduism they have multiple, multiple scriptures. Um, so I think the canon is one of the multiple for Buddhists as well. Um, on Dharma Day, Buddhists go to their temple. Children may listen to stories from the, the Pali Canon. They hear the Buddha's teachings about giving and sharing things. 
In this picture on the right, it talks about, um, it says, these Tibetan boys are training to be monks. Reading the Buddhist teachings is an important part of their training. My dog just jumped off my bed. That's what that sound was. Carolina's Diary, Wednesday, July 6th. Friday was our Dharma day. We celebrated the Buddha's teachings spreading all over the world. We held a special puja. The Buddha taught people how to work things out for themselves rather than telling them what to do. Last week, my friends were planning to run away from school. I talked to them about their reasons. In the end, they didn't leave. Oh, how lovely. That was a very mature thing for her to do, right? Was to have a conversation about um, why their friends wanted to leave. And it, it helped them see reason and not running away. Um, okay, so Dharma Day. What shall we draw for Dharma Day? Maybe I could try and draw the cannons. And I hope I'm saying that correctly. It might not be cannons. Um... Oh, I forgot the H. I knew it. Ah, this flag is in the way. Well, I'm going to draw something on this side of the flag, okay? Um, so there's scriptures, the Pali Canon, it looks interesting. So it's something, it's like two rectangles and they're connected by string, as you can see in this picture here. Um, and it's like they, they have holes, a couple holes in them. Um, that help them stay connected here. So it looks like um, there's a hole here, hole here. And it's like an edge to this, like a book. Um, hole here and here. And then looks like there's a lot of writing. Um, here, and then this part's decorated. Okay, and then it's connected with string. So there's string like that, and it's connected here. This goes up and around. Um, here, 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 here. They have this kind of like flowing freely here. Alright, so that has to do with Dharma Day, okay? <laughs> Alright, and now we are moving on to Kathina, I think is how it's pronounced. <clears throat> um, and this is celebrated in either October or November, so it just depends on... Um, when the calendar falls um, on this um, holiday, okay? So it, it's different for every year. Um, Kathina celebrates Buddhist monks and nuns. It began in Asia. Kathina comes at the end of the rainy season in Asia. In Eastern countries, Buddhists look after the monks and nuns. They give them everything they need. These include, this includes food, new robes, and shelter. Buddhists like to be generous. In this picture on the bottom left, it says, These young monks in Burma are carrying the food offerings they have been given. During the rainy season, monks and nuns stay in monasteries. You see still? Um, when the rain stops, people give them new robes. The picture on the right here says, These monks are looking at the cloth they have been given to make new robes for Kathina. Oh, they get new... New cloth, it looks beautiful. Carolina's Diary, Wednesday, op October 27th. So this is at the, at the end of October this year. Um, it's, a, it's good having a mom who is a Buddhist nun. 
When we're out, everyone can see that she's a nun, so she can't shout at me. <laughs> also, she's much calmer than she was before she became a nun. People don't give her new robes, but they help in other ways. Last year, they gave her money so she could go to New York for some special Buddhist classes. Aw, that's so cool. Okay, so... Um, Kathina. This is the next one. Are you still able to read this? Hmm, how many are left? Oh, just one more. Okay, I don't think we're gonna run out of room, hopefully. Um, I can always tilt the camera. Okay, so Kathina. And Kathina. Shall we draw the new robes? Or I think a, um, a dish for food might be a little easier. So it looks like they use these big bowls. So we're going to, oh, I'm just going to draw a bowl, I think, and fill it with food. Okay, and maybe there's soup in there or something. Okay, simple enough. Um, and then last one, last one, Sangha, 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 oh my, okay, so I'm going to go with Sangha, Sangha Day, um, November, this happens in November, Sangha Day is a celebration of friendship, the Sangha is the Buddhist community, people like to gather with their Buddhist friends and teachers, they celebrate the love and support they give each other. Um, the picture on the left says, these children in Britain are meditating at their Buddhist center on Sangha Day. And the, um, here it says, on Sangha Day, people go to their temple. They may read from the Buddhist holy books and meditate. Many people do puja and listen to a talk by a Buddhist teacher. Everyone enjoys a shared meal. The picture on the right says, everyone enjoys having a meal together on Sangha Day. Mmm, yum. Carolina's Diary, Sunday, November 9th. Today was Sangha Day. We call it NKT, Temples Day. Remember what NKT stands for? NKT stands for, I don't remember, but I remember reading it. So it stands for, um, the new Kadampa tradition, Buddhist. So it's a, it's a type of Buddhist. Um, there are different types of Buddhists. Um, so Carolina is an NKT Buddhist. So we call it NKT Temples Day. We have temples in different countries where everyone can pray for world peace. On Sangha Day, we do things to raise money for the temples. This year, we had a show with people doing silly acts. You could pay money to throw cream pies at them. It was really funny. Then we shared loads of food. Mm, I really want to draw food, maybe. So it looks like they have little balls of something on a stick. So I'm going to draw that for Sangha Day, okay? <clears throat> Is this off? Oh, that's so ugly. Is this off camera? Let me fix it a little bit. Okay. Sangha day. Okay. And I will draw the little food stick. Stick food. Food on a stick. Okay. Um, so let's see. There's some food here. Ta-da! A little crooked, but oh well. So there's the yummy food. Yay! Okay, guys. Um, I think that was it. Let me double check. 
Um, Sangha day. Yep. And then we have a calendar of um, all of their their holidays. Um, so I will give you all copies of that so that you can have your own Buddhist calendar. Um, I believe I made copies a long time ago and they should be at the school. So I will make sure to give that to you all in next week's work packet. Um, just so you have a copy. You don't have to do anything with them. Um, so yeah, just a reminder, um, older kids who have this chart, make sure you copy down this list of Buddhist holidays and traditions in the customs and traditions section of Buddhism here. Okay, um, that is all. Thank you for joining me. Um, I will see you guys later. Bye!